Hey guys, welcome to Waste Not Wednesday. We go live every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Mountain Time and we take junk that we thrift or get for free or that we just get out of the garbage and we turn it into <laughs> home decor. Um, we're two days out from Christmas and one of our New Year's goals as always is to stay on top of projects. So we're gonna be just doing some painting, showing you some um, multiple paint techniques, how to upcycle stuff. I don't think anything here was over $5. No, um, and something we love to do, especially after Christmas time, is you know we're we're all we've we've been doing this for quite a while, and we just didn't call it spring colors, uh, but we've been basically painting spring colors since after October. Oh yeah. Um, so you'll notice that we 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 and we try to stay on top of the trends for you guys. Uh, so spring colors are uh, that this you're going to see a lot of like deep olive -y type colors this year, um, topes to go with that tan, like crockery is right on point, our, our crockery color. So like lots of that going together, blended in kind of a cohesive look. And so we're going to show you what we're going to do with that. And I'm just going to be dropping like collections on here. Caitlin um, has a test this morning that she has to prepare for like a, like a medical test. And so I don't think she's going to be on here for a little bit. So for those of you that are my regular peeps, if people have questions and I don't get to it, if you know the answer, that would be amazing. If you can help me out today doing that, I will be monitoring comments, but also painting. Um, yeah. So we got, we got stuff to paint. I'm going to get going. I do want to show you guys one thing. Let me, I'm going to grab. While well, she's showing yeah, you one grab thing, a link for this. let me show you another thing. All right. So check out this gap here can you guys see that gap yeah you can see it so these have a really big gap and i don't know if they missed their miter cut by a little bit or if that's factory because this is such big design on this trim it's wood it's like carved wood but i caulked this corner here and look how much better that corner looks this one too i gotta finish cleaning this one up but Jamie was like, no, don't do it. I think it'll be fine. But look how much better that looks caulked versus like these big cracks up top. So oh, I mean, I'm okay caulked. I just didn't think we were going to like smooth it out. I'm going to drop a link. It's not going to be perfect because the... the designs don't match up. Like whoever made this, like there's highs and lows on the corners on the miters. But, you know, it does. I, I feel like it looks a lot better. Comment. Let me know if you think it's better. If you think I'm just well, spinning it's my wheels. It's better than nothing for sure. Because those do not match up. Well, but I think you didn't want to do it because you're like, it's not going to line up anyway. But no. I feel like it looks better. I didn't want to like make it perfect. This is fine. This is an acceptable solution. Oh, yeah. I was never going to make it perfect. So look what came in. This came in like last Friday, I think it was. Um, these are our craft kits. Look how big this wooden wall pocket is. The quality is really good. I wasn't That's holding thick. my breath. Because I was like, well, how good could it be for the price point that I have to stay at? They're really good. So if you guys have signed up for next quarter's craft kit or if you're on like the recurring, this is what's coming. Um, supposedly, you can. They, some of them may be in different finishes. So far, they've only sent me unfinished, but we're going to paint them anyway, so it doesn't matter. Um, but if you haven't signed up, I dropped the link below. You can sign up for recurring, which is once a quarter you get billed. Or you can sign up for a one time only, and the price does include shipping. So this is what the next craft kit is. We're going to design a decoupage paper. I think I'm going to design one that fits vertically across here, and then we're going to do like a paint finish on there. Anyway, super cute. And you can put it up just like this. Like you can add a hook to the back if you want to, or you can paint all the sides, and it actually will stand on its own, which I like. It kind of gives you some versatility in the project. So if you haven't signed up. Be sure to sign up. Um, I think I ordered enough for 199 because I'm going to use this one for the video. Um, and I can order more, um, but it might take a little bit to get here. So if you're not in those first 199, there might be a little bit of delay. So if you've been wanting to sign up for that craft kit, do not miss out on that because I think this is going to be popular. I've wanted to do a wall pocket for a long time. But having Zeb build these, I was like, <laughs> so I was so glad to find these at a good price. Like, it's fine if I build like five of them, but not 200. <laughs> I don't have time to build 200 of mm -hmm. those. Um, Zeb's apron is not the one. He, this is like a canvas one we used to carry. In so the, the leather one we got, if that's what you're asking for, we thrifted that at the bins. Um, that sold right away. We sold that. This is, this is just like my carpenter's apron that I use. It's got a little 
sleeve for like small hammers or whatever. Yeah, I think we used to carry it, but um, I don't know if we do anymore. I don't know if we still have it. It's I use it when I'm wood turning. It's got lots of wood chips in here. <laughs> but I have a new shirt on that I got for Christmas, and I was like, well, I don't feel like changing. And I get a lot of paint on my clothes. I have an apron that like, you know, would work perfect to keep the paint, most of the paint off of me. So I'm like, you know what? Maybe I'll start wearing an apron in the videos. All right. I have painted it this a million times. I don't care. I'm wearing my sweatpants. I dropped a link to the thrift haul collection. So if you want to buy any of these things that we're painting, obviously, if you're watching it right now, the pictures are going to look like how they look like. I'll update them later. Sometimes they sell before I get them updated. So I'm going to grab some cornstarch for my mold because I'm going to get started oh, okay. gluing that first. You're doing molds? Yeah. I do have resin out, and then I got you a new fresh pack of air dry clay because ours all seemed like it dried out. Yeah, remember the last video when I was making do? <laughs> like, I need to have fresh clay. Oh. I've got a little bit of a cold, but I am feeling better. Zeb's still getting over being sick. It's like kind of gone through our whole family. I feel like... So, like, the first three days were, were not good, and my throat hurt a lot, and now I just have a snotty nose. Yeah, I, uh, I was the last one to get it. I just think... I get zoned. I don't know if you guys know what that is, but I have a pretty good immune system. And yesterday was really my first day being sick and I'm already feeling better. So I'm holding out hope that this will be the worst of it for me. So this caulk is designed to be paintable. I think it's 15 minutes. It says 20, but I'm going to get it in the cracks here and then set this aside for a little bit. I am going to be painting this. They have a lot of scuffs that aren't good. And someone spray painted these and it's got some light spots and some sheen, weird sheen issues that you can get with spray paint. So I'm going to repaint them. So I'm using trimmings. I think this is trimmings one. Don't hold me to it because they have three trimmings molds, but this one doesn't say which one it is. And I think that was the first one that was before yeah. they started marking them. And I'm using the air dry clay from IOD. Okay. I'll drop, this is going to take me a little longer to go back and forth and drop links, but I'll drop the link to the IOD collection in case you guys have projects you're working on. So Jamie made a post yesterday. I'm like, why <laughs> you got to poke the bear? She was like, when are you taking down, curious. when are you taking down your Christmas tree? A lot of people wait for, uh, is it affinity? Uh, I don't know what it's called. We actually gonna... don't celebrate that. So the... <laughs> Ascension, uh, but it's a January lot of people, 6th, whatever a lot is. of people wait for that day. Second Christmas, 12 and days after Christmas. One something. gal was like, Ascension. I'm surprised. It's, no, I don't know what it's called. I, I don't know enough about it. No. But, but one gal was like, uh, I'm surprised with it. Uh, you being religious, you don't wait until the sixth. Epiphany. Epiphany. There you go. To me, an epiphany is an idea. That's really good. You got um, an epiphany. Which is fine. You know, take your Christmas tree down whenever you want, in my opinion. Um, ours is probably, Jamie's going to try to hold out cause her mom's been out of town, but I don't think she's going to make it. And we'll probably have Christmas all out of here by the end of tomorrow at the latest. Well, no, <laughs> I was thinking my plan is cause we decorate kind of the whole main level of the house. Um, and I don't really like to wait cause if I wait too long, then it stays up way longer than I want. So I'm going to take Christmas out of this main living area. And then leave Christmas in the family room, which is just like a tree and the garlands because the kids' trees in there and leave that up because we kind of like the glow at night. We leave all the garlands on and it's kind of fun. So I'm going to do that and I'll just take Christmas out of here. It's fine. I decorate multiple spaces. I can do what I want. And uh, But don't be surprised if like we've shifted gears, skipped all the way over Christmas, even though the solstice was like seven days ago. And moved to spring. And move right on to spring. Yeah. <laughs> I've been making Christmas stuff since... September, I think. So I do it for a while. I feel like you should just do whatever you want. Last year I had to take it down because the, the dogs really mangled my tree. This year they just ate all the berries off the bottom. Rex. Yeah. Next year I will have no berries on my tree. I'm planning on, I'm going to try to find red velvet, like in a cranberry color balls to put on my tree to add the, that similar color. Cause they only mess with just the berries. So the berries are going to go I'm going to change that up. You know, I feel like dogs have a crazy intestinal tract because Rex, they got so, wires in them. Rex will eat all the foam berries off and then Cody will eat the wires. And then you see him out there eating grass in the yard. I'm like, oh, he got another one of those berry pick wires in him. We're probably going to have to do something different next year, but they're fine. Like they don't even like, you know, 
stuff moves on through and they're fine. Well, I'm not using them next year. That's what I was just talking about. Yeah, I think I feel like it's not the dogs it. are, you know, the dogs are more important than the decorations. But they're also designed to eat like bones and wires and stuff. So, <laughs> so I'm using this air dry clay in here. You could also use resin. I'm just smoothing this out. And there's like a little rim on the edge of the mold that you just kind of pull it again so you get a nice crisp side. I'm going to put this, I'm just going to cover this seam on each side and then I'm going to paint it. So you know, on that, that note, I would love to see, because a lot, I know a lot of you guys have pets. What's the craziest thing your pet's eaten and they're fine? Haven't we asked this before? <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, yeah, we have. I, I think we did in a video. I think like it's a been week. a while. I don't remember if we did. I literally, it was like a week ago. Are you for real? I for real. I for I, real am. I must not have been paying attention to you, or uh, maybe I was in a day. Because I remember. There people... were a couple videos I did last week with a fever, so, you know. Yeah, luckily <laughs> I caught your cold, but I don't have a fever. All right, I'm going to pull this out now. So I just like to flip it over and then demold it against the bottom. What? I can't be responsible for the things that happened while I had a fever. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to put this on here on the sides. What I don't know is if I need to like cut it to fit. I just thought this would look really good on here and then I'm going to repaint the whole thing. All right. I'm done setting those aside. I feel like it's a thousand times improvement. Once I paint them, it's going to really hide that they don't quite match up. And because, because the trim on this, I think is awesome. Like look how thick that is. It's just huge. And it's got a little Leslie said Coco there. ate socks. <laughs> Labs will eat anything. Dog ate cans of cat food. The only thing that was left was a pool tab. <laughs> no, like the whole can, like the metal can. <laughs> yeah. Glamma, the I can't pre-sell any of the items that we thrifted yesterday because I actually have had surprisingly enough, you know, can you guess what the number one requested item was from yesterday that people want to buy? I, I saw a couple comments. I think it's from yesterday's video. If you haven't watched it, it's a good one. I know the easels were popular, no. but um, I, there was something I can't remember. The garden cookie cutters. Oh, I've had at least 10 people tell me they want them. So because sometimes we have things that are super popular, multiple, multiple people want to buy to keep it fair. We don't pre-sell anything. It all gets listed at the same time every week. So when we thrift in the week, if you see a video like on Tuesday or Thursday where we're thrifting, those items will be available Saturday night just before 8.30, usually between 8.25 and 8.30 um, mountain time on the website. And we load only once a week. And that way, if there's multiple people that want an item, it's like as fair as we can make it. So that way I don't have to pick and choose because that, that I am shocked. Like I almost didn't buy them, but they were too cute to pass up. So... Stephanie said, I would have guessed his standing shelf clock. That one was also popular. Two people said they liked it, but yeah. people have been messaging me wanting to buy the cookie cutters. The sock. standing shelf so clock, sock, I almost <laughs> called it a sock, uh, clock is one of my cooler finds in the month of December. I really like it. And it's bigger. It's got a lot of really cool detail on it, and it's this tall. So, um Oh, no, Glamon, don't be sorry. It's totally fine. We have so many new friends here that don't know, and so I always like to let everybody know. Um, and I'm so excited that people love, like, it makes me really happy when people get excited about the things that I'm buying because we sell, to be honest, the majority of things that we sell are DIY products, like the molds, the clay, the paint, you know. That's where we make a lot of our, our income and how we grow our business. But when people buy my our unique like thrifted finds, it makes me so excited because I'm like, oh, they love the same stuff that I love. So I I love it. Like keep it coming. If you guys like something that we thrift, let us know, and then that way when I'm out there, I'll I'll look for more. Okay, so I kind of smushed this in here because I wanted it to go all the way top to bottom because sometimes these have a habit of shrinking a little bit. Um, if you do this and it does shrink. What you can do the next day is take a little bit of clay and backfill the cracks if it's bugging you. Um, I'm not gonna be super worried about it because I'll paint this and then tomorrow I'll come back and put wax in. So if there's a, a crack here and here, I'll just put wax in the crack to make that look good. But if it's bothering you, that's the way you can fix it. So this is what I'm gonna do on this. I need to make sure it's what straight here. What ones of these were a pair? I thought. Was it 
Was it these two, Jamie? Are these a pair? And then these three were no, a set? No, it's... I thought... These three... you have to look it up online. Just paint them all the same finish. All right. But I think these are a trio. Yeah, I think, those I, think are I got them right. Individually. Because we, we kind of were going to show you guys how you can mix and match different shapes and styles, but you paint them the same color and it looks the same. It like matches. So if you got stuff in your house that's maybe not cohesive or you got it at different times or someone gifted it to you and you like it, but it doesn't quite go with your stuff, that's where like painting it can really change the way your whole decor looks. And you can like swap it out seasonally if you want and you don't even have to buy new stuff. Just get a little paint and... And take Cheryl, a, take a half hour and paint something, and you got a whole new look. Cheryl says she likes my clock. Oh, Shelly says she really likes the resin flower bundle. That's the one you picked. I like that a lot too. The resin flower. Oh yes, the roses. Yeah. They're like unopened roses in the big old thick bunch of them. Robin says she's like she likes all the stuff that she's bought for me. Thank you. Yeah, we, uh, we have a lot of people that will say, like, how come people will buy from you? Um, because you you show where you get it from, what you paid. And I think a lot of it is because the same people could go to the thrift store and they don't find it. Like, you got to have an eye for what's well, going to look good. Like, we find – that's the fun of it. We find different things every week. Yeah, and not everybody is going to find everything that we're finding. It's always different. Mm. We got two gray skies out here. And depending on my mood – I'm better at thrifting. Like if yesterday I actually feel like I wasn't, I'm not in a bad mood. It was fun, but I wasn't like hundred percent cause I was under the weather. And I feel like I'm a much more effective thrifter when I'm like super happy and I'm not feeling sick. Like I really can scan. And when you're shopping, it's not just about the way you find things. It's about finding things and thinking of the way they could be. So there's a little bit of creative brain yoga that has to happen there. Um, so you got to be on your toes so that right. way you can see things and then come up with ideas on how to make them over. Like yesterday, that cloche, the, the, the little trio, if you guys watched the video, we have found a base and then a plate. And then while I was there, I remembered I had a cloche that I had thrifted last Thursday. And so we made a thrift store marriage and it looks really good together. So I'm going to make like a creamier crockery. I don't want it to quite be crockery, just like in the same family of that kind of tannish color, but I'm gonna lighten it up. But I didn't wanna, I almost went with like a stark white, but sometimes when you go with like a bright, bright white color, like this uh, this vintage linen is a really bright, like blue gray or white. Or our white linen in the cottage color yeah. is actually our brightest and it's, white. And it's very bright and then you go and dark wax it and it's almost like too much contrast. So it pulls I, too much blue. So it's yeah. warmer if you make it more of like a cream color. So I'm gonna mix so this is the white linen and this is the crockery and the cottage colors. This is, it's, it's made by DIY um, for us and don't, don't get it confused with the DIY paint. It is different. It's got a built in sealer. It's thinner. It's got a self leveler. The DIY paint is clay based, all natural, like super good stuff. It's our paint line that we pick all the colors for has our little Jamie Rare Ventures logo on it. You can get it from us or any other DIY retailer that carries it. Not every retailer carries our particular line. PJ said, plus you guys do all the work. It is a significant amount of work. People may not realize it. It takes like, it several hours a week just to go find it. Photograph it, it, upload it. Upcycle it. We actually paint it, put it on the website. Zeb's been editing because my stupid phone editing software isn't working. So he had to edit yesterday and I didn't feel good. So all of our thrift items are still on the table. You know why I think it's having such a struggle because it's the holiday season and the folks down at Adobe literally. They like, take so much time off. This like time during the holidays. They don't work like the entire month of December. Yeah. Like you might I, had a, that, I have but... a couple, some people do. So there's some people there doing like administrative and making sure everything's like running smoothly. All the security people are there. Um, but the, some of the programmers and stuff, I had a friend that worked there, um, at Adobe cause we've got a big Adobe, uh, office right up the street from us here on the freeway. And he literally took off like from Thanksgiving to like January 12th. And I'm like, 
how did you even do that? He's like, oh, I didn't even burn any vacation days. We no, they have off. vacation days, <laughs> but then they also get a couple of a weeks. They get like two weeks off yeah. before Christmas and New Year's. He's like, I didn't even burn up all my days, and I still was able to take that off. I'm like, that's wild. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how you don't work for a month. It it's, feels very European to me because I know Europeans take a lot of time off for their holidays. And no, no, no shade there. We're like Americans who love to work. I think it also helps we love our job. I'm not going to lie. Like about four o'clock on Christmas, I'm like, I'm really jonesing to go do a project right now. Yeah, like I can only sit for so long. So if you don't know what Adobe is, Adobe is software that we use for video editing. They make Photoshop. Um, and they also and, make Photoshop. We use it for our decoupage papers that have just graphic design on it yeah. and whatnot. They have a lot of different things. But we use Adobe primarily for um, graphic design and for editing our videos. I just don't know how to use the computer. It's a lot more complicated than when I edit on my phone and I don't have the patience to figure it out. So I just keep hoping that Adobe figures out their life so I can go back to editing on my phone the way I have for months. Or yeah, they, may, other side they on. may have a serious bug with like an Apple it's, update it's or the something Apple update and no one's really there to, to like it. spearhead a solid fix. They're putting band-aids on it right now. Hey, girl, up Gold Studio, Kelly Weiler. Hey, what's up? How yeah, you doing? She's probably getting ready. She's going out to California in, I think Leslie's going out there too, in January to do a demo that. with Debbie and Dion and a bunch of other, I think, I can't, now I can't remember on the fly, but a bunch of my other creator friends are going there to do a painterly class with the new paint from DIY. So that's going to be exciting. Debbie did the coolest thing. There's, Jamie grew up eating some pies from a uh, it's a bakery they only have like a couple of them but they've now since started selling oh, their pies in a certain a few uh, uh grocery store chains over there and so every time we go to california we always pick up these apple pies and debbie shipped us two of them <laughs> she knows how and much they I arrived love. alive it was awesome what did i do with my knife just had it well Last time I went, because Debbie doesn't eat carbs, so it's just my pie. And I was at Debbie's house, and so I have this julian pie, and I just took a fork and started, like, spooning out of the... Oh, you moved it over here. Oh, sorry. That's okay. I spooned it out of the middle of my pie, and then Sally and Josie came, the owners and creators of Iron Orchid Designs, and they're like, I'm in the bathroom. Debbie has a tiny studio, so you can hear everything. And I'm in the bathroom, and I hear sally go what monster just ate out of the middle of the pie and i yell through the door that's my pie and then sally yells back i'm gonna eat yours so she started eating my pie she grabbed a fork and started eating out of the middle too everybody loves julian pie it's so good as a little girl we used to go get it and so it's kind of nostalgia for me a decoupage medium can i use big top or sweet pickens top coat yes so i would say um if you're using tissues like napkins or tissue paper sweet pickens top coat would be okay if you're using anything thicker paper wise then i would use big top if that's what you have on hand like hands down best is liquid patina crystal crystal clear chandelier that we carry but if i had to choose between big top and sweet pickens top coat and it was a thicker material that i was trying to decoupage i would use big top because Sweet Pickens is kind of a thinner top coat. So I just don't think it lends itself as well to decoupage. So you glue down the trim before it's fully dried. Yes, the clay you want to, if you're using resin, that's a little different. Now I got to throw this away because it's got glue on it. If you're using resin, you want to wait till it's all the way dry, obviously, and then glue it down. The clay, you want to do it while it's wet. And I'm even going to paint it while it's wet. So I'm going to get that. I'm going to take my heat gun, get a little bit of a crust on the clay so that way it's kind of dry. And then I will put my first coat of paint on here. I probably will not wax it until tomorrow because you have to like wipe the wax back. And I don't want to lose some of my crisp designs from my Iron Orchid Designs mold. What is the product you use as filler what was that we just used uh caulking but oh. for a big area we use like bondo yeah or uh is it uh, so you wood? could you could liquid um i think it's called liquid wood or something plat i can't remember the name of it now um but if it's like if you want to put it in where there's a heart if there's a big heart you would probably need to use bondo yeah i would recommend bondo on anything bigger than like a half an inch and even then probably still bondo 
Um, I just use uh, Tide Bond 2 wood glue. Uh, it's not the best. It's just what we always have on hand. I like Gorilla Glue construction adhesive or um, quick and thick type bond. But we always Zeb buys this by the gallon and then we put them in these little, this one we thrifted, these little squeeze bottles. So that's what I have. So this one's already kind of a creamy color. This works really well, like on these black ones. This is going to look cool when we distress them because they they will really show the two-tone. But I'm going to just go all same color. We'll break out some dark wax before we're done here. And kind of like give your these, color. Did you mix up enough that I can have some too? Uh, I don't know. Maybe uh, these candlesticks are small, but I got five of them. Okay. There's enough in here. I can see you're, we're not sharing. I'm just kidding. I'll use this one. I was on the fence about sharing. <laughs> no, it's all right. I'm going to use this one. Somebody had a question. Can you track... Uh, I don't know if you can track it from our website, but if you order from us and you put your email address in, when it ships, you'll get a shipping email. So if you've ordered since Christmas, like since we've been off for Christmas, it has not shipped yet because nobody's been in to ship it. Um, we're, we're like just Adobe barely right getting back to the shop today. So anything that's been ordered from like last, probably Thursday, Friday and on um, would not have shipped. If it was before that, it's possible because I think they got almost every order out before we closed for the holiday. But this time of year, shipping takes sometimes the full 10 business days to get out just because they had like we four or five off. that they got done. I think we got pretty much like all the way caught up, like up to the minute before yeah. they left um, for Christmas Eve. Uh, but but the post office did not come there was actually them. only one package that the post office didn't get yeah i was there this morning so um but yeah you should have gotten an email if you didn't you can just email info at jamierevintage.com but just know this time of year sometimes orders can take um 10 business days uh, to ship out and then however long it takes the post office just because we let our employees have time off for the holidays we're not super busy this time of year so it's not like the shipping times are usually good but Caitlin does have a test procedure today. So if you email today, you might not get a response back until tomorrow. But check your email. If you included if you included your email, it might have shipped. She's actually pretty good. She's as bad as us. She gets to laying around if she's sick or whatever, and she can't, can't yeah. stop working. Some businesses take this whole week <clears throat> off. We closed last, was it last Friday at 4? Mm-hmm. And then today's our first day back, our shop's first day back. But we still have some people that are out. So we're running kind of on a skeleton crew. Um, so any more questions? Yeah, double bag air dry clay. I've got this rolled over, but I will double bag that because I've had problems with it drying out. I think the problem that we had was we got too many different random packs. They took if moisture I just from each use, other. <laughs> well, if I just use the one pack, I'm fine because I'll use it up before it dries out, but I had like 12 packs in there, and so I wasn't using them all. It's so like tail end of a few different projects. All right, so I'm just doing my base coat here, and then we're gonna move on to another project. What are you, what's your plan for that besides the-, the So I'm gonna dark on? wax. I also, we've got that big tub of shipwrecked in there. I might, I'm not gonna go heavy with it, but I might put it almost like a verdigris style in a couple of these little cracks. Okay. And see what that looks like um, with the dark wax. Might might layer up some So shipwrecked shipwreck. is a turquoise wax. Yeah. Shipwrecked. Shipwrecked. Uh, shipwrecked. <laughs> shipwrecked is a turquoise wax that we carry. Sorry. All right. I'm going to, if you guys have comments, I'm probably not going to see them for a little bit. So you guys can comment. I might have to look back later. I've got to get to painting. I'm not very good at playing Caitlin and Jamie at the same time. But yeah, if you ever have shipping questions, you can email info at jamierayvintage.com. Or if you go to our website, we actually have a number you can text if you're not a big emailer. And you only text because Caitlin does work at home. She does have kids. She doesn't, um, she doesn't call unless it's like a desperate situation, but you can text her there. There's actually some businesses that are small like ours that don't even have a phone number. So. All you can get is an email. Yeah. <clears throat> we have the phone number because sometimes people try to email us and there's just something wrong with the email system. So I always want people to find a way to get a hold of us. So we put our um, phone number on Well, And we there. do have the shop number, but that's mostly for like local in-shop questions. The 
the gals at the shop don't know how to answer your shipping questions. They are shipping for you, but they're not tracking it past that or managing like claims or anything. Yeah. So if you ever That's call our Caitlin. actual store, they won't be able to help you with shipping questions. Most people don't, but just so you know, um, can you fix the cameras up? Oh yeah. So I'm, I'm starting with white linen or vintage linen, and I'm going to have to be really careful because we can't pull out the face on this. Oh, I probably like, could have, but it's, pro is it one of those that has like 20 staples in the back? I don't know. Oh, no, I do this all the time. That's nailed in a lot. Yeah, I, I do this a lot. It's fine. I, I use a little brush and you just go nice and slow and you kind of get the paint close to the edge, but not all the way. And it's fine. Requires a little bit of a steady hand. It requires more patience than I usually exude when I'm painting, but I can do it. Linda says, I finally was able to do my apron dish and towel craft kit. First time I stenciled with DIY paint on fabric. Came out beautiful. With It was a great Christmas gift. Yay, I'm the, glad you liked your craft kit. The DIY kit. paint is really cool for stenciling fabric because it's so thick. Like Even if you're almost dry brushing, it still goes on there because of how pigmented it is. That's what's fun about the craft kits. Like I, I ultimately want to give you guys something that's going to be like of value to you that you want to going to want to use in your home. But I'm also always thinking like, what kind of techniques can you learn and get all the supplies you need to do it? Because if you have to buy full size products for all the supplies, it can get pretty expensive. So when you're just learning something new, it's nice to have it all in one place. Yep. This time of year though, it's always good. We're, as we were talking about shipping to like find tracking on your um, packages so it because sometimes things get lost we do our best to follow up with them but we don't have any control over the post office they're they do their best but sometimes have you guys ever gotten tracking and it says like it's supposed to come to you and it winds up going to some state completely unrelated and then it goes to another state like your package goes on vacation yeah <laughs> even mm. amazon zeb ordered some stuff that was supposed to be here for the day before it Christmas. said it was going to be here like a morning it's delivery showing up Thursday. Because we have a big hub here in Salt Lake. And so a lot of times we can get stuff same day, next day, because um, <clears throat> it's only half an hour away. And it's like, hey, it's going to be an 8 a.m. delivery tomorrow, which was great. That was like last Friday. Would have been perfect in time for Christmas. And it updated and was like, oh, sorry, not going to be here till the 28th. <laughs> oh, good. Marcia says... Her tracking is in the invoice email. My package is still in transit. Looks like it's in San Antonio. All right. Well, it should be getting to you soon. Yeah, even Amazon. But like Amazon is a giant company. They're not like us. We have four employees, uh, three full-time and one part-time employee, and then Zeb and I. So it, sometimes it's all hands on deck if we get super crazy busy. December is significant. It's our slowest month of the year. After Black Friday, it's uh, pretty slow. So we're usually pretty good about staying on top of stuff. We did... Maria had a death in her family, so yeah. we had to kind of make up for a lot of stuff while she's been gone um, handling that because she's been, she's had like, she had the death, but it wasn't just, uh, it wasn't just a funeral. She also is like handling she, the funeral the and the finances of and the, yeah, power of attorney, all those kinds of things. And all that. So Maria's been gone and she's one of our full-time employees. And so that has been a little bit of a struggle, but luckily my girls always step in. So, yep. my Odelia is a substitute teacher. No um, substitute teaching no right substitute now teaching over Christmas right now. break. <laughs> She's been able to help. And Eliza, too, when she doesn't have cheer. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Oh, you mailed it. 12, 9. All right, Marsha. Yeah, email Caitlin. If it's still, if it's not moving, she'll be able to figure out and put in a lost claim. And we can reship it if we need to. Unless it's like a unique item then. And sometimes we have to refund those. But if it's like a, something we carry in bulk, then sometimes we have to reship it and then put in a claim. It happens. Tis the season. What was that meme that says, like, it's in God's hands now? It's like, uh, your four employees do much so much better than Amazon. We did have a package the other day that Odelia did. She didn't put enough bubble wrap on it. She doesn't ship as much. So we had to go over packaging protocol. 
we do ship a lot of really unique weird stuff yeah we uh it's it's always it's always fun when you're like trying to sh ship like weird shaped home decor items <laughs> And if they don't fit in a normal box, we're making pack. We're making our own boxes and things. I think already you know, just painting this enough, white. Don't you think this has gone a little bit more like elegant than the barn red? I think so. Yeah. Barn red isn't bad. I actually don't dislike barn red. We're working on coming out with a really good cranberry barn red in the cottage color line. I told the manufacturer. Well, told Debbie to tell the manufacturer for me because I don't really have much contact with them uh that if we could just get some primary colors across the board and a good black like sky's the limit with the cottage colors like you can make any color you need if you've got primaries or close to a primary color so she's really working on that i'm not going to hold my breath that we're going to get that but we have sent some color samples of what we would love to have this spring and we're waiting to hear back with what can actually happen right now. So, is there an IOD release coming? They usually have one, but it's not. It's not. It's not been announced to retailers. IOD, like many of the other companies, I don't even believe they're working this week. So, maybe first. I mean, first quarter, which gives you. I three mean, months. I'm sure that there's behind the scenes stuff. Oh happening. yeah, they've well because they have their products come from overseas, so they've made those products like six months ago. Yeah. They know, but we don't know. And if we don't know, that means we're a ways out from that. White is always elegant. Thank you. I'm trying to decide how to paint the back of this because mm, I don't want tough. to paint that. Well, you're not going to really see. It's got an open back and the mechanism is exposed. So it's not really designed to be seen. It's designed to go up against the wall. I'm just going to paint up to the wood. Do as neat as possible. Well, I hear doors opening upstairs. The kids are finally, uh, you Picking know, up. we've except with the exception of Jack, we basically have three teenagers. Redrick's twelve, but you know he's right there. He's uh, turning thirteen this year. Yeah. Um, and they were up late. We were watching uh, the Twilight Saga last night, and so Jack was Eliza in bed. has never watched the Twilight movies. If you remember the craze from the early two thousands and all the books and stuff, and so she watched the first one. And I'll admit, I've read all the books and watched them with Jamie because Jamie kept like going to midnight releases. And then she took me to the first movie and I'm like, well, that wasn't terrible. I like vampires and werewolves. And so I read the books. And so I, and I've seen all the movies and Eliza's like, dad, you're probably the only guy I know that can quote these movies. I'm like, I've seen them a lot. They've been out for like 10, 15 years at this point. And I don't hate them. They got vampires and werewolves in them. And some people like a little more... Uh, gory or vampire but i like stephanie's myers take on yeah vampires i don't and want werewolves. like really gory <laughs> stuff well really scary but yeah so we put jack to bed because definitely not appropriate for a nine-year-old but um, eliza hadn't seen him so we're marathoning those movies right now <laughs> yeah, so if we look tired every day it's because we're staying up late with our kids to party we're hoping our our plan is for us this week we we hit the ground running the day after christmas because yesterday we did our video um, we will hopefully do more thrifting and we'll do some painting and get another video ready for Thursday. And then we'll take off until Saturday night. I mean, I'm still going to be posting and doing social media, which is the bulk of my work, but we won't be making any more videos. So we'll have a couple days to spend with the kids, use some of our Christmas presents, go out to the property, oh, yeah. do some target practice, things like that. Well, I have a couple of bows I thrifted. Um, for the kids, they're like youth bows for archery, and we haven't been out there to use them. I guess we could use them here in the yard. It'd probably be all right. <clears throat> but we got we got a big enough yard. But it's much more fun to go out there and like have lots of space and not have to worry about stray arrows. So this is a really good question. Esther says, I have a cabinet I want to paint. Would you recommend painting the inside and the back? There is a glass door so you can see inside. So my little hack, because if you, especially if you're brushing, is if you can just remove the back of the cabinet and just paint the back. So let's say it's the inside is wood and the back is wood. I would paint the outside, remove the back, paint that, staple it back on, and then only paint the back. Because when you're looking straight at it, 
it kind of like if you use a contrasting color, like if the outside is like a pretty Tiffany blue and then the inside you paint white, it looks okay to have brown on the sides and the shelves because then you kind of get like a three toned look and your eye goes straight to the back that you've painted that's contrasting to the front. You can paint everything if you want to, but if you want a, a quick and easy way that'll be half the amount of work, remove the back, paint that, put it back on, and then just paint the outside. I've done a lot of cabinets like that, and I think they look really good. Especially this time of year when I can't spray things because it's too cold and I'm brushing everything by hand. Ain't no way I'm painting the inside of a cabinet by hand. If you've ever done that, you know what I'm talking about. It's a lot of work. And it does you no good if it's so much work that you don't get it finished. Okay, I still need to paint the bottom of this, but I'll let the rest of it dry. I see the molds on there. I have a metal door in between garage and house. Can I use milk paint on this door? Um, yes, make sure you use extra bond in your paint and do a test area and then just seal it however you want to seal it. Use a liquid sealer or whatever. Okay, what do I want to paint next? I'm going to paint these candlesticks. We have a lot of candlesticks. Yeah, we had these, a lot. All these details are taking me a hot minute to get in the crack. I'm going to have to hustle so I can get some wax on these. There's like this weird insert in this one. <clears throat> I don't know. No, just leave it. Just paint over it. I am going. Yeah, I'm going to use DIY. So paint, they though. just use like tin from wherever that was made, cut it in a circle and like upcycled it and reused it. Just trying to get off all like the loose paint. So I'm not really, if you'll notice, I'm over here not really worried about brush strokes or anything. Um, honestly, I really like it when you add a lot of different brush strokes to stuff and you wax it and it looks like you've got texture or like almost like a plaster finish. Um, I will smooth them out a little bit on these big flat surfaces, but this paint's going to self-level and you're really not going to see a whole lot of brush strokes. It, it flattens out pretty well as long as you're getting it on there good coverage. So somebody said fun target practice is to buy like a remote control car and have somebody else like move it and you got to hit a moving target. <laughs> oh, nice. So it's probably not going to happen anytime soon, but we have a couple of ridges um, on, on our 40 acres and like probably about 10 or 15 acres in the, in the bottom. That's it's like, a, that's yeah. like real usable. And then the rest of it would need to be terraced or, or, uh, you know, it's, it's not like super steep, but it gets you winded hiking up it. We'll say that we have two, we have two mountains and a valley on our 40 acres. Yeah. Um, but between these two ridges, I think it would be really cool to be, do like a really long zip line across. Um, and that would also be fun to put like a target up on there and see if you could hit it while it's going across. Yeah, Cause you always have to have a solid back behind you. You never just, um, target practice into the open. That's not safe. All right. Oh, good morning, Eliza. I see you side eyeing me over there. Oh, they said we're blurry. I, it looks clear to me. Let me Am see I... if I can make it focus. No, Am it I... looks fine. I'm just gonna double check. Um, Is Jack on his video games? I don't know. Jack, are you playing? Jack got a new handheld system. Nope, it looks fine on my end. So, oops. Ah! Mute. <laughs> Try to mute it. Okay. It's clear there. Okay. It's a lot more complicated without Caitlin on here. Usually she double checks for clarity. All right, I'm getting there. I'm just using this little brush because it's what I already have paint on, but it'd probably be a lot faster with a bigger brush. We might go a touch over so I can show you these. We usually try to go live for about an hour on Do you Wednesdays. Guys, comment below if you guys have painted candlesticks. I get mixed, I always get mixed responses. So some people tell me that they love candlesticks, they sell really well. And then some people tell me that candlesticks don't sell for them. Same with silver. Same with silver. We sell a ton of candlesticks and we go through phases. Sometimes we have a lot in the shop and then sometimes they all sell and we're like scrambling to find more. So let us know what works well or if you just paint them for your own house i have a decent amount of candlesticks all, most of my candlesticks are either copper or silver in my house like my own stuff we had some big turned ones up in our room yeah i guess those ones are like stained 
Okay, Leslie says it's not blurry. Rhonda says it's fine. Okay, essentially, Kimberly says, I paint candlesticks, but they haven't been selling. Have you, how, so have you this staged year, them? I would say if you're going to paint candlesticks, go with neutral colors, kind of like what I'm doing here, or even like light blues, like grayish blues, light grays, because the way that all the home decor is going, people are starting to do like big color walls that are kind of like a skeleton key color. If you look up on the website, you can see what skeleton key looks like. It's a DIY paint color. It's like a smoky blue gray. They're doing, uh, and then they're pairing that with like, creams and and uh taupey cut type colors and tan colors so they have the big pop of color but then they bring a bunch of neutrals in and and even the color isn't like super bright in your face it's kind of like a muted more like soft neutral blue or a, like a like leaning towards like a neutral green if that makes sense like more earthy like that's that's uh what i've been seeing in all my research and that's what Jamie and I've been doing for quite a while now. So if you if you want to be on trend, fine. I always say paint what you love. If that's not your thing, if you want a big red accent wall, do it. Like that's your house. <laughs> Essentially, Kimberly says she doesn't think it's an Arizona thing right now. And yeah, sometimes it just depends on where you're located. Um, let's see. Verdigree is hot right now in Palm Beach. Yeah. Verdigree is good. I think it's good to have candlesticks too, because like if your power goes out, it's nice to have a place to put your candles that you're lighting. Um, another thing I feel like is super helpful is sharing pictures, showing how the candlesticks pull a space together. Because one of the things Debbie has always told me, if the buyer gets confused, you lose. So if you can help them like envision it in their space, it does better. Uh, Rhonda says, I've never painted a thing. Part of me would like to try, but watching others is easier. <laughs> <laughs> I agree, Rhonda. Watching other people do oh, stuff is I love you. I love the awesome. honesty with that. That I watch a lot of other people work all the time. Like It's funny because we're DIYers. My but kids we... make fun of me because I've been watching. Before I got my tractor, I did a ton of research, watched a lot of people working with it, watched a lot of reviews, seeing how like real world farmers were using the tractor that I had purchased um, or that I was looking at purchasing, um, how they were using it and how they liked it, how it was holding up in real world applications, not just what like the manufacturer was telling you the specs were. Um, Cause there was a ton of videos out there on the one I was looking at. And then now the kids are making fun of me cause I'm still watching tractor videos. <laughs> I'm just watching people work on a tractor. I've got the tractor now. I've done some work with it already, but Eliza's like, oh, is that another tractor video? And she'll be like, oh, brother. I get on, I get hyper fixated on stuff. I like more like, what's that, the study of humans? Like, I love to study different anthropology. cultures. Yeah. Jamie, I, like just, I love Jamie's it. Jamie's an anthropologist at heart. Watch out. <laughs> I love to see how other people live their lives. I love like religious anthropology. I love cultural anthropology. So I follow Peter Santanello on um, YouTube. He's super, I love watching him. He recently went to Jamie's Snow got me hooked. Like he's been doing a lot of like Native American series oh, yeah. right now. And I love that. Yeah, that's been really fun. He recently went to Snowflake, Arizona. And that's where Zeb's family is from. So that was super fascinating to me. But yeah, I always love things like that when I'm working on projects. Um, Renee does, so my sister Renee, she's on here. She says she does other crafts she doesn't paint. My sister Renee is really good at like handicrafts. So I remember she used to do pretty punch, like, um, you know, those, puff, those patches that almost look like a letter from a letterman jacket, but in all different styles and designs. I think currently she's doing a lot of diamond art. My sister Deborah used to do a bunch of embroidery, like embroidery hoop type stuff. I like don't know if my sister work? Karen crafts, to be honest. She's a nurse. She has horses. I'm trying to think if there's anything crafty that she does. She does love to decorate for all the seasons. She likes to go down the river in her kayak. Yeah. If you've ever been to Cracker Barrel, that's the best way I can describe walking into my sister um, Karen's house for every season. Like she does a really good job. You're she probably, has a horseshoe Christmas tree that her, her husband yeah. Ryan welded together for her. Her husband does welding. That's kind of his craft. I think creativity. Well, he's a farrier, can, so he's got lots of spare horseshoes. Yeah, I think creativity can take so many different ways. And Zeb and I are—we our main thing is painting, but we try everything under the sun. 
<laughs> like if we see something and it looks like fun, if you we'll see do us it. doing random things and you're like, why are you doing that? That's not what you normally do. It's because we we do we're always like, well, that looks fun. That looks like something we could do. You guys, we just got done building this house like three years ago. We haven't even like in January, like mid January, we will have been moved in for three years. We're not even finished. We're not finished moving in and we're not finished with all the trim work. And, you know, we've had to repair a few things already that have broken in the house because that's how it goes when you own a home. And you have a lot of kids. Jamie's driving by this property the other day. It's like four and a half acres sale, in the middle so of totally town. Safe. It's It's got like like a probably a more modern style, like ranch style house from the 80s on it. And then a bunch of like barns and like makeshift sheds and, and silos on it. And then right in the middle that you can see from the street, there is a pioneer home that's probably like mid 1800s. Yeah, mid to late 1800s, somewhere in there. And it looks like it's being used for a shed. She sees this and immediately texts me. She's like, hey, look on your app and see who owns this. I want to pay some stuff off and buy this property. In a couple of years. <laughs> like, I didn't say we had to she's move like, there. She's like, I don't want to sell our home, but we could rent it out or Airbnb it. <laughs> like she went that far with the conversation in this text that she sent me. <laughs> well, and maybe I just stay here and we just fix it up. I just, the Pioneer home is so beautiful. Well, I looked at it. It's falling apart. I, I didn't even go drive by it. I can it. tell I, by the, the stage of all the other buildings on it that it's probably not going to get fixed. Like they don't care. And so, and it's not for, oops, that's, that's not it's, the right one. It's not for sale, but it's Jamie, not for sale, so it's Jamie fine. has learned that just because it's not for sale doesn't mean you can't ask. I'm not asking anytime soon. We have, we need it. We have a bunch of work stuff. It just, we got it, done. it just cracked me up. We, I'm like, we I'm have like, a hit list of things that would have to happen. That 2024 is the year of the cottage, the year of the greenhouse, the year of finishing other random product projects, maybe the year of finishing the, the ceiling shop. trim in our own home. Yeah. That. The year of fixing the dryer vent that seems to be plugged and won't won't vent good. <laughs> I just want to save the property. There's actually multiple properties. That's on my what list, happens is she sees but... these old properties that are like once the people that live in them are gone or move or sell it, it's going to be knocked over on four acres. You'll see someone come in and put like seven or eight houses in. Like a small investor will come and turn it all into new spec homes. Bonjour de France. Hello, Alyssa. How is the weather in France? I haven't been following. Usually I look on my phone to see how the weather is in Paris and in London, two of my favorite places to go. You know, you're always dreaming, right? And I'm, I would be happy to live in this house the rest of my life, to be honest. Well, so. and some people would be like, well, what about you got your pool and you got all these things? It can happen again in another place. Those are those are the types of things that are just like value added when you're doing a property. So, But I do like I would not do it without the shop like being in better repair, getting the studio finished, getting the cottage finished. Yeah. The bar needs to be recited like there's a huge. But with Zeb. I hope. If I have something else that he thinks is fun, and then there's a list of things that have to be done before we can entertain that, sometimes his motivation to complete said projects is a little bit better. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> I also tend to be thing. more budget minded, and I remind everybody hey, we're working on this now. We can't buy budget that. minded. He's only budget minded once we bought all the things he wants. That's not true. That is 150% true. Not even 100% true. It's 150% true. He like will buy a bunch of stuff like a big new tractor and a I big I did new a car. lot of lateral moves last year. And then, and then <laughs> I want to do stuff. He's like, oh, we better slow our roll. I'm like. Well, I did have to remind you when you sent me that text that I'm like, hey, we got like a bunch of irons in the fire right now. <laughs> it's like a future dream. Um... Marcella says she's wishing for an apartment with a washer and dryer. Oh, yeah, that would be definitely top on my list. The first thing I did when we first got married is I bought a washer and dryer. Yeah, she took all the money that people had given us for getting married and, and I was straight, a loan officer. straight to Costco. I was also a loan officer, so I had a bunch of commission. 
and we bought a washer and a dryer. I'm not sad. I already am not good at laundry. If I got to go to a laundry mat, forget it. He's for real. I haven't felt good and our laundry got washed, but it's still in a giant pile. So maybe it'll happen in another couple of days. All right. I think I'm going to put the finish on this one. I've got this one too. I think is coated enough. The other ones are going to need second coats, but I can do these two and kind of show you. And here, probably on camera, we're, we're, we're a couple minutes out from when we normally quit, so we might be a little long, but. What I'm thinking is we might just leave this here and then we're going to thrift. Well, because we've got to take Kayla to the doctor. So, because she's having a test done, she can't drive. So we will come back and we'll finish these and we'll show you how to finish them and do the second layer on the end of the video that's going up Thursday. Because people so, said they like the thrifting, but they still want to see the thrift flips. So you can see they're not fully painted. And you can also definitely tell the difference between Jamie's white, her bright white candlesticks, and these cream colored these ones. These are like oatmeal colored. Yeah. So you can see they're not full coverage on a couple of them. These two on the end over here are full coverage. But just painting them, now I can put them all in different areas of like our home decor or, you know, even together, almost like a little vignette situation. If I wanted to do like a fun candle display on the mantle, which is where I would probably burn candles anyway, is up above on the mantle. Um, and now they go together. All right, I am using vintage linen, if you're wondering the color. We get asked this a lot. What can you paint? Like what types of materials can you paint on this particular piece is metal and wood and the diy paint sticks to it all marcella well, says i love like resin the mix of white and oatmeal and carrie says bonus that i got all of her craft stuff and lots of jrv stuff some packages unopened oh i'm sorry carrie i think her sister passed away i must have missed that comment Oh, no. Robin says laundromat washers are full of mold and worse. Ew. The only benefit from a laundromat is if you get really behind on your laundry, you can go wash it all like in a couple of hours, which if you don't have a big family, you probably wouldn't quite get that. But if anybody who has a big family, if you have a washer go down and you can't do laundry for a few days, it gets a little crazy. My kids actually um, wash their own laundry, except for Jack sometimes needs help. But all my other kids do their own laundry. All right, I'm coming. I found the shipwrecked. Um, Duke says, the late Kitty Carlisle Hart always said, skip the flowers on your dining table and said, have interesting pieces. I like to have both interesting pieces and flowers, especially once I take my Christmas down, I'll probably have fresh flowers on my well, you table got roses on the table right now yeah i got roses at costco last week and they're still looking good um and then sometimes i'll buy like a potted plant like a hydrangea because they will last a lot longer and i'll put that on my dining table so we got this tub that was dented and <clears throat> but this is this is the shipwrecked wax so it's a great verdigree like kind of uh turquoise colored wax. Patina is what we'll use it for. If you don't know what verdigris is, that's kind of like the green and blues and faded color that metals can get, especially copper and brass and sometimes silver too, when they get tarnished. Whoa. Grab the wrong end of that. Jana says that she tells her husband he's lucky she's such a thrifter because she could be shopping at Nordy's every day, which I'm guessing is Nordstrom. And I've shopped there, so I, I get I get what you're saying. I love to thrift. It's like I'll a treasure. It's anything. like a treasure hunt every day. <laughs> All right, in one minute, remind me the camera's gonna do the bars on the side. I oh, need okay. to go fix that. Okay, I'm actually going to start with the dark wax first. 
Did you guys know we're almost to 200,000 subs? Oh, yeah. I forgot. It was a really slow crawl, and I thought we might not hit it by the end of the year. But yesterday alone, we got over 100 subscribers. Our new thrifting content, where we thrift and then sometimes we thrift and do flips at the end, is getting a ton of play. And so our channel has been getting a ton of new subscribers. Like I was watching the count just click up last night after we uploaded our latest video. Yeah, so if you want to like share it out to your friends and family and be like, hey, subscribe to these folks so we could hit it before the end of the year, that'd be awesome. Yeah, we'd love to hit 200. Leslie's been amazing. Leslie actually comments on a lot of our videos and because I forget to tell people and remind them, please subscribe so we can hit 200,000 because that'd be so fun by Monday to hit 200,000. Can you fix the camera? Oh, is it a minute? So now that I've dried this DIY paint, I'm just using a wet rag to pull it back and wet distressing. Because this has this really cool embossed tin, it's just gonna look really good. Take the paint off the top. I'll show it to you up close here in a minute. This is a really ugly green. What time do you have to leave to go get Caitlin? Jamie? Well, um, I have to leave by 11.30, so we're okay. All right. I have to pick her up by 12. And I'm actually going to take you with me so we can go thrifting. Oh. So we can film it because I really want to finish filming today for our video that goes up tomorrow. So then we have Thursday and Friday off. Oh, that'll be fun. Yeah. That never happens for us. No. <laughs> Even last week when we and were trying for Christmas, it off was... Off is a relative term. We have a dining table to build that'll be on the Jamie and Zeb channel. But to me, that's not really work because it's for personal use. Okay, so I don't want this to, I like the cream color, so I don't want this to be like super dark. So I've got, I just put this on, I've got a damp cloth, which is going to pull a lot of this back, and it's just going to sit down in there in, if you want to take less off, use a dry cloth, and if you want to take even less off, let it sit for 10, 15 minutes, and then wipe it back. While we're doing up close and personal, so you want to show them, can you oh, see yeah. that on there? That looks good. So and this is just the wet distress. Good. So a little bit of that green, but the dark was on the high point. So that's mostly what you're seeing. And then I did paint the back too, even though that's going to go against a wall. I'll just screw the knob back on. It does need to be waxed. So we're getting the age. It's making those details pop out because they were getting kind of blinded. Anytime you have like a solid light color or a solid dark color, if you've got something that's really ornate, a lot of the details get lost. So it's fun to do like a wax or something on those. But... Just wanted to mostly wipe it off. I'm also, because this paint is so fresh, I'm getting a little bit of wet distress in the corners of this, which is also awesome. Yeah, this is a lot better. Picture this like on a dark wall, or if you were to hang this like on a chippy backboard, that's really cute. So I didn't lose all of my fun oatmeal color that I had. I got a little bit of wet distress and I got some wax. It's important if you're is gonna- Is it dark or black? Sorry. This asked. is dark wax. Dark. Sorry, did I say black? Um, I don't know. Somebody just asked. <laughs> yeah, dark wax. So it's more of like a brownish, like dark Let me dark show color. you this clock that I started. This will probably get another darker color over the top of it. This is the clock that I did earlier. Remember, it was red. And we added this mold on each side. It was kind of like primitive farmhouse, and it's going a little bit French country here. I need to paint the bottom of it, too. So, So if you want this look, just keep in mind, paint it. Then, you know, get it, get it to the point where it's dry, but don't wait so long. Cause if you wait, if I let this paint, the cottage color paint sit overnight or for a couple days, it's going to be very hard to distress anything, which maybe you want that look. Maybe you don't want it to distress. Um, but if you want to go for like a little bit of distress with the wax and, and the, the colored waxes and, and the texture and things just, you know, just hit it right away and you'll, you'll get the look. So somebody asked if we could add the colors to the white wax. You can add colors to the white wax, or if you want a more true like colored wax, just use the DIY clear wax that we carry on the website. We okay. have a video called Tinting Wax. Like yeah. if you just look up Jamie Ray Vintage on the channel and, and or Tinted Wax, I can't remember the exact phrasing of it, but we show you how to do that. It's really simple. Yep, so that absolutely, just add the DIY paint. <laughs> Just mix that into your clear wax and you can make any color that you want. Okay. That looks good. Are we going to keep going? Yep. I'm going to get my, uh, okay. I'm going to do the shipwreck on this one too. Okay. Turn to the sides up. Should I keep going with it and then just do a dark wax or do I should I do a different color of the top? Um, I would do. I kind of wanted to do Harbor like in milk paint. I had it ready. Oh yeah. That would be good. 
I mean, if you want to I'm take... not going to get to this clock, so I'm going to move that away. This one just needs to be waxed. That one's actually pretty this... close to the right color for, like, this year's color oh, palette. Yeah. But guess but what? The they didn't paint the back. the red on the back is not good. So, so I'm repainting that, but that'll, that'll put that on the video later today. So <clears throat> make sure you guys hit the notifications bell because we'll have a video going up tomorrow where we finish all of these and we do some more thrifting. Um, so if you want to see the end results, watch that video coming up because it sometimes I don't get as much stuff finished. Okay. Marcella says cool about making the colored wax. We should probably do another video. It's been a while. Well, we have so many videos, a lot of like our original DIY videos that we did probably the first three years of the channel. Like we did a ton of just like hard hitting straight up DIY videos that are pretty short and to the point. Uh, but they get lost in all the other stuff that's on the channel because we do four to five videos a week and have for years now. And there, there's there's a couple thousand videos on the channel. When you go to look for it, you're like, oh, my, <laughs> where's where's this at? We try to keep it in playlists, but there's enough videos in some of those playlists. It's hard to keep track of even that. Hey, Vicki. She's watching in silence. She's working and listening, but not watching. So it's almost like a podcast. We talk about a bunch of random stuff. Well, hopefully stuff. The, uh, the conversation has been entertaining this morning. <laughs> it's all over the place, that's for sure. Jamie, ask about, Zeb, about the show V. The show V. Is it five or? I don't know. What is the show V? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, Debbie. You'll have to. What is the show V? I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> so we will be, our video, our Saturday live video will be not pre-recorded this Saturday. Yeah, we're going to just do that one. Yeah, we're not, it, at New Year's we don't do as much baking. We already have more food than we know what to do with around here. So the reason why we pre-recorded our video last week was because we would we knew we were going to be in the middle of a bunch of stuff. But this week, we don't need to make any more food. So, our pantry's a hot mess. So with wax, you'll notice I'm mostly just, I'm not doing this big flat surface. You could, and you could get kind of like a dirtier look to it. But I'm just trying to hit all the areas where like age and dust and like oils would naturally collect, um, especially if it was like wood. I'm just mixing one part warm water to one part milk paint and I'm just using a fork to mix it up. The color is Harbor and we carry that on the website as well. All right, so. we're gonna try to make this look in, like it's got so like right here, I'm just going to V drop. was an alien show in the 80s. Zeb, fun fact, Zeb didn't have TV in the 80s. I didn't, not much. <laughs> we, we so had like, if it was a TV show, he didn't watch it. We had whatever the, and even into the 90s, I didn't watch a lot of TV. Yeah, his mom now has many TVs, but back in the day, they did not have a TV. And if they did, it was just to watch movies. We watched, we did, we watched movies and stuff. We watched a lot of old music. I, I grew up watching like Star Wars and musicals. <laughs> I'm gonna rinse this out. So not going super heavy with this. This is a definitely like this, this tub will probably last us for a solid couple hundred projects. So Zeb, somebody asked about a sander. The one we mostly use is we used a DeWalt then we just recently upgraded to a Milwaukee, but we're going to be trying out the surf prep. We, when had we, do a, our we table. have a surf prep that I'm going to be using on the table build on the Jamie and Zeb channel. Um, and if you don't know what that is, that's kind of like a vlog where we do like a lot of cooking and gardening and building side projects, like building stuff. That's where all of the cottage makeover is until Jamie's ready to put the pretty furniture in and do the, uh, the finishing touches. That'll, that'll probably be on this channel. But yep. we have two channels because not everybody wants to see me doing demo on the cottage. So if you follow Jamie and Zeb, you'll get to use us, watch the new surf prep sander. Um, but if you didn't want to invest in an expensive one, we used DeWalt for a long time. I think it was like 60 bucks. Yeah, it's like 60, 70 bucks and they're, they're pretty bulletproof. Like they last, like we you think of how many projects we do. Um, we bought like one a year. And yeah, they last us a whole year or longer well and you can and we on, dropped them a lot but i'm excited about the surf prep one we're gonna we're gonna put that through its paces and really give you guys like a good honest review on that yeah we wanted one for a while and we reached out to them we actually a uh, matt moses from moses restorations referred us okay. to them and so they sent us one to try out so we're gonna try it out we wanted to buy one for a while but it was nice of them to send us one 
we don't do a lot of brand deals only on things that we would want to buy anyways well and you'll see you'll see that sander on this channel a lot too like it's going to get used yeah, it's going to get used a lot okay so that looks great this ben. would be really cool with copper like if you did this look with copper if i had painted these copper and did this i think that would really be fun but it's going to have just enough subtleness on there it does it's not like in your face like bright boho colors this still fits in the french country category it's like a soft verdigris yeah and i just put like little hints of it and now i'm wiping that back too because I didn't want, I, I just really, <clears throat> excuse me, I just really want it like down in the cracks, subtle, mixing in with that dark wax before it's fully cured. Okay. So that we get kind of different shades of the 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 teal and turquoise color. Um, to get Happy Mail, Karen, you just have to share this video and we pick two random people every week. This, we usually um, announce it on Saturday night's thrift haul. This week we're going to pick four because we missed two last week. So right. there's no way to get happy mail directly. Like not everybody that shares will win, but we pick new people every week and we send them stuff in the mail. Yeah. We pick two a week. So just have to share on Facebook. You can All share right. anything. It doesn't have to be just this video. It could be a, a picture or a video or whatever, because I would rather spend money shipping stuff to people than spend money paying Facebook to advertise. Don't tell them I said that, but. All right. So you <laughs> see this on there. It's like pretty subtle, not super in your face with either of the waxes, but this one here you can totally pick up that detail so much better than even this one here even though it's got like good big detail on it um and and this like we could stop right here we don't even need to distress this this some people are gonna like this look right here but this one is right up my alley and i feel like it gives it a lot more interest when you set it up on a shelf or put a big candle on it or even if you're not using it for an actual candle. You just want it for decor purposes. It'd be pretty with a little bird nest I, on I feel it. like that combo works really well. And and you saw how little I put on. Like, look at it. look how much I was dipping my brush. It's hardly any. Like this is this is gonna last me over a year. <laughs> and we do a lot of projects. I'm gonna do this look quite a bit, I think, because I like it. I think it turned out good. Yeah, the surf prep you hook up to a vacuum. I think we got an attachment with ours. So we got, we haven't even opened the box because we got it like in December amongst a million other things because they were gone for a while. They're a small company too. So it's funny because a lot of people think of companies like Surf Prep and stuff as being giant or Iron Orchid Designs. That we're, we're all still qualified under small business. Somebody there already told us that we were not a small business. <laughs> like we have four employees. Under 100. Like we are a small business. Under we are, we are what's called a micro business. No, not just small. It's like, you know, they have like the minis, but then you can also get teacup dogs. We're like a teacup small business. Like little, little. I'm getting this. I do. I like how that's turning out. The, the no, white that's going to look good, through. especially if that milk paint chips. I don't know if it will because I just painted over DIY. So we'll see what happens. I didn't add any bond to it. We'll see. If it got really chippy, I don't know that I'd like on it. On camera, because... it's looking like you did white on white. It's almost like it's oh, so it's light. Like it's like a light like... blue. It's because it's so bright in here. Can you guys see that? So this one, because this is detailed, I am going to wax the whole surface on this one. Um, because naturally, if if this is this if this was like 150 years old, it would have some age and wear and dirt and dust and oils and all kinds of stuff down in the cracks. Jamie Ray Vintage making new stuff look old again since 2000. When did you quit your job? 15. 2015. Actually, I did it before that, but yeah. that's when we became legit. That's well, I think that year before I we even quit is when we set up the LLC and actually got like a official uh, like business license to operate. And I've had my just, Facebook page for over 10 years. Instead now. of just using your social to for taxes. <laughs> Yeah, I used to just do... Because if you're real small, you can just, at least here in Utah, you can just... Just do the Schedule C. Yeah. What I used to do with my taxes under. But we're not giving tax advice. Nope. We're not giving tax we advice. We are not legally authorized to offer tax advice. It's just what we did. <laughs> Is brass still in? Oh, yeah. It's even more so with the younger demographic. I feel um, like they're using trendy. it almost like they would gold. Yes. Brass is in, all metals, mixed metals, like 
we have stainless steel in our house. We have brass, we have copper. I have silver candlesticks, all kinds of shiny mixed metals. So this is not getting, same with this one, not full coverage with this shipwrecked wax. And you can get this at Jamie Ray Vintage, same as any of the other paints, the brushes we're using, all the stuff. And I'm just going to go in the bottom on these because that's where it would collect if it had gotten wet or, or humidity had built up. If you live in a humid area, you know exactly what I'm talking about. We live in a dry area. Yeah, we don't really I always get forget it. what all you humidity people have to deal with until I go somewhere humid and I'm like, oh my gosh, how do you live like, like we this? don't even, unless a can has sat around for a long time, like we don't even get rust on our paint cans. We hear about it all the time. I'm like, what do you mean you're getting rust on your paint cans? I don't, what are you talking about? <laughs> How is that even a thing? All right, I'll finish painting this later. I'm going to bring this up close so you guys can see the lighter color. And I'm going to heat gun it and try to bring back some of that white. So it's looking a little splotchy in a couple spots with this shipwrecked wax, a little more than I wanted. So I came back with the dark wax brush over it. And it really muted that down and kind of dispersed it. So if you don't like the look, just keep playing with it. Keep pulling the waxes in and out. Just remember you got to work with them because they will start setting up and curing in about 15 minutes. They'll dry out pretty good. <clears throat> All right, so this is pretty subtle too, but I like it. All right, I'm pretty well done, Jamie. How are you looking on yours? Um, I'm pretty good. I'm gonna so, just- So right up in here is my favorite. You can see how it kind of gathered up in there. It's just subtle, but look at how much more this detail pops now that we dark waxed it. We didn't lose the oatmeal color completely. It's really hitting on the highlights and the high spots, but now you've got like some darker shadowy areas that you wouldn't normally get in like full light in a room with a light on and it adds a lot of interest i think kimberly zeb and i will not be at debbie's <clears throat> next month we only make a couple times out there a year there's actually because of the stage of life that we're in there's actually a lot of events that we don't go to because we got kids we just can't travel that much but we'd love to go but we'll be here. I'll be watching from home and being jealous of everybody that gets to go. A lot of other creators, all their kids are grown. Like Dion, her boys are now all out of the house. Debbie doesn't oh, Didn't have her kids. son just graduate from college? Uh, her one son, yes. And then her other son is Odelia's age. So her two oldest are the same as my two oldest. But then I have three more kids. <laughs> so traveling is hard. We have to be very intentional with I it. I would say we might make two or three visits to do events a year max. And that might be a lot even. Okay. All right. I'm just going to try to get this dry enough. See if I can wet distress some of that white back through. And then I'll have to finish it later today with dark wax because so it definitely needs dark wax but i have to get this so we'll try to show you this all together on tomorrow's yeah video. if you watch tomorrow's edited video you'll see all like of the all finishing. finished we'll, get, we'll do a two-parter well, i pretty much i mean i showed you what i'm gonna do on these candlesticks and it takes a little bit but i think the little bit of extra um, it's not that much more time involved and it really makes a big impact on your finished pieces. It goes from looking like someone just put paint on something to looking older, aged, you know, having like a curated type look. I'm just wiping this back to like the white to kind of bring out some of the base layer and I'll show it to you guys up close. I know you guys can always see when I'm Working and, back here. and honestly, we talked about these neutrals kind of being like a spring theme, but I feel like they work all year round because they're such a good base. Okay. It's still drying, but let's see if we can get... All right. Can you see that? That's so that white's peeking through. I will do another second coat on all the flat areas so it's not quite so streaky. And then a dark wax. This almost looks... Kind of like Italian to me. You're not French. I don't know. It's really good. I like it. 
Okay, guys, if you need any of these paint and products, you can pick them up at jamierayvintage.com. Make sure you hit the notifications bell so you don't miss anything. If you're not seeing videos pop up in your feed, sometimes it helps to unsubscribe, then resubscribe and hit the notifications bell so YouTube knows you're serious and that you wanna see our videos. Um, and if you like this video, be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more. DIY. We'll see you guys on the next episode. Bye, don't, guys. Don't forget to hit the resubscribe when you unsubscribe. Yeah, please resubscribe <laughs> if you unsubscribe.